cut his head, not just hurt him, bring complete victory. A couple nights ago, I was reading books to Riley. We're reading books, two, three, Katie, I think four or five. And I'm just crazy. I just try to use a read part of the Bible and songs. And then we read them also, the stories, you know. So we read other, the, the little books for kids, you know. And there is one, it's so big, it's called So Big. Little house, big house, a little car, big house. And so I got this inside of me because I even tried to use, Katie maybe doesn't know that, but I even I tried to use those little books about one, two, three, to always bring God into his life because I know that God is the only one who can heal completely his brain. So I told Riley, how big is God, Riley? Big. Dari. He doesn't say Dari. I love it. Dari. How big? How big is God? Here is a 50-year-old pastor asking a 3-year-old the big questions. You know what I'm saying? And Riley said, 10. The biggest number he knows. 10. How big? And then 10, he says. Like you multiply. Now for me it's universes, you know. How big? And then 10, he says. And he kind of knows that I'm coming again. He says, and then 10. And then 10. And then 10, he keeps looking at me, Dari, and then 10. And he, this is the father I am. And I said, show me how big God is. Riley, show me how big God is. And he looked at me, and he got out of his bed, and went to the pile of books that we have against our wall. And he went straight and put his finger on the Bible. This is how big God is, Dari, he said. And I want to say like Jesus to Peter, this was not a revelation from bone and flesh and blood, but the Holy Spirit revealed this to you, little man. I will never forget that story. That's why the Bible says the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What is a giant that we need to hurt and cut his head off? A giant is a relative word. For a three-year-old, I'm a giant. So whatever is a giant for you might not be a giant to the person that you're married to. And we have to let God, through His Spirit and through His Word, reveal things to us so we can be a blessing to the people in our lives. I'm trying to help you out a little bit here. We're going to go really deep into this stuff because the enemy is in the business of division and God is in the business of blessing and of building and of transforming and of changing and of doing, going from glory to glory to glory to glory in your life. I'm going to give you a few examples. We're just starting on this subject. Examples of giants in our lives. Some people have a giant of depression in their lives. Nothing makes them happy. They don't even know what it is. They saw it. They don't want to do anything. Some people have a giant of rejection. Anybody has ever been rejected here? <sighs> that is a giant that the enemy wants you to keep in your heart and your mind for the rest of your days. And some of us react and act and talk and think and are hurt because we have a giant of rejection in our lives. And you know where the enemy can really get us? When we don't even identify the giants in our lives. You cannot defeat something you don't know is your enemy. You cannot work against something you don't even know is there in your heart. And so that's why the Word of God, I'm going on. Deaths, some people have a giant of deaths. They owe money to everybody. Their life becomes a mess. They have to work and work and work and work. They're overwhelmed. They're stressed. They stop serving God. They stop serving their families. In other areas, the family needs them. Because death, money, owning others becomes a giant. And that's what I say, and I tell my kids, 
The Greek word for credit card is Satan, I say. It's not really. But be careful with debts in your life. Be careful. There is people that doesn't even know that they lack of wisdom to have good money administration. They don't even know. They think everything is okay. Just living in this life of swimming financially. Diseases can be a giant. People who struggle with mental decisions, diseases, physical diseases, family diseases. There is people who doesn't know that they have a giant of hatred, but they have reaction in their mind, in their hearts that comes from this giant. The Bible says, the Bible says the the word became flesh in John chapter 1. And he is the light of the world. You cannot see things in your life when you walk in darkness. Amen. But Jesus, the word, became flesh and he when he came and he died on the cross and he came to the old ones and they rejected him just a few follow him and they hung him on the cross and he's the light of the world the bible says some people have a giant of temptation i'm talking about this i'm taking sometimes temptations and they have partial or momentary victory in their lives but not complete Be careful. I believe that God wants to take us to a place of cutting the head out of the giant. Not that you're going to be perfect. But Jesus responded to Satan in the desert with what? With the word. And he left him for a while. When the Word of God is so strong inside of you, I said this last Sunday, you and I need to go to a place, and I don't want to make you feel bad. I'm trying to encourage you. You and I need to go to a place that anywhere we open the Bible, when we start reading, we know what they are talking about, and we know what's the story. And if you book, you open Psalms, or you open Proverbs, or you open the Gospels, or you open the Word, you know what is the next verse. You know what it's talking about. You and I need to be more full than God than Good Morning America. That is the place of victory of a Christian. That's what David knew about this. Well, it's a little serious we're talking about the word. There's people who are Addicted to stuff. They are addicted to stuff. So you know what's the worst thing? Try to help somebody who is addicted to something, but they don't see it as an addiction. Have you ever been in that place? It's a very hard, it's a super place of darkness. No, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm very humble, and all they talk is about themselves. No, I have forgiven. I forgave that person. I have no hate in my heart. No, they get offended when you say, you still have a lot of cr hate and bitterness. Towards. No, addiction can be more than just smoking something. There is people who have a giant of loneliness in their lives. And listen. Many of these giants will not be defeated with people's counseling and will only be defeated by the Spirit of God through His Word. Saul's army has not fought the war yet. There is one guy who comes every morning and every afternoon. His name is Goliath and screams at them and scares the life out of them. And they run and they hide. 
A friend of mine told me about 30 years ago, the victory is not accomplished at 10 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon. The victory is accomplished before you face the real battle out there. I'm trying to go somewhere with this. They have not fought the war yet. There is one giant that comes. And David understands that. And David tells Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, David said to the Philistine, to Goliath, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you, not with a stone, not with a rock, not with a sling, not with my ability. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, for God, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Every time the enemy comes against you, he is going against the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, my friend. And you need to understand, that's what the Bible says. You have come against the armies of God. You think that you are coming against a bunch of guys and a king called Saul. No, you are coming against the son and the daughters and the families and the kids who are left behind. And when we understand this spiritual reality, we go against the enemy in the name of God. In the spirit of God. You and I know what I'm talking about because here David is saying, you come to me with the sword. What kind of sword is the giant bringing? The sword of the flesh, the spear of the flesh, the spear of the javelin, of hate, of rejection, of bad, of lies, of temptations, of immorality, of addiction, of, of, of reject. I can go on and on and on and on. All these things, they are coming against him. You come against me and I don't bring anything. I bring God with me. You have challenged God because the Holy Spirit has a plan for my life. The Holy Spirit has a plan for my marriage. The Holy Spirit has a plan for my kids and he's coming against what God is trying to do through my family. You see how the word of God brings revelation to us? And nobody can, def can, bring, can have victory over God Almighty. Amen. But when I go with the javelin and the spear and the sword of the flesh, it's a mess. And you know, you've done it probably before too. David is on his knees by the brook picking up little stones. That's the place where you and I have to start our day. On our knees, picking up from God's spirit, from God's word, from God's encouragement, from God's revelation. That when the devil comes through others against us, we say, not today, Satan. I am done fighting with the weapons that you can overcome. I'm going against you. So I'm not going to think the same. I'm not going to talk the same. I'm not going to act the same. Because I spend time with the commander of the armies of God. And he told me to go against you. This way is a new way. Anybody here raising kids? Try to fix it with a weapon or two of the flesh and it didn't work. Let me see your hands. We probably all done. We all probably got mad. We all probably said stuff and did stuff. It wasn't the, the spirit of God. Enemies, giants, loneliness. There is people who struggle with that giant of loneliness. I encourage you with, with all the love in my heart. Get closer to Jesus, and you will not be lonely anymore. My mama teach me that, not with her words, but with her life. She became a widow at 57 and left another until 81. And she said, I had a relationship with God when your dad was still alive. But when I became a lonely widow, I understood that I needed to really get closer and make really my Jesus, my friend, and he became my friend. 
and I drink coffee with him every single morning. Loneliness. Stick it back to the devil and use it to get so full of the Spirit of God and the Word of God that you become one of those men or women who can really inspire and encourage others to walk as a real Christian with real victory. Failure can be a giant. Some people say, I'm never going to be able to serve the Lord anymore. It breaks my heart to see how many, after a failure, became public. They left the pulpit. They left the ministry. And that became a giant in their lives after Jesus had forgiven them. Can I give you a piece of advice? Don't judge others after they have had a big failure. Run to them, embrace them, pray with them, forgive them, and be there to be part of the tools of God to heal that person. There is enough of the other ones who can point fingers and talk behind. Let God use you as Jesus would do with Peter. For others, it's success. Success can be a giant when we start with a humble heart. But God uses us because we start with a humble heart. Raising kids, a ministry, a family, whatever it is, a business. And God uses us because he looks at our heart. And then he blesses us and uses us. And I have this funny thing that I do with a very good dear friend of mine, a pastor. And we talk about when is the time in ministry that you start doing stupid things. After 20 years of ministry, after 30 years of ministry, because we've seen one or two or more of people who don't understand the success becomes the giant. And maybe this is more like for a pastor's thing. But if you are in life, be careful when you start, that you start everything and end everything with humility. Disappointment can be a giant. There is people who they were highly disappointed by people they highly respected and admire. Leaders in their lives, men and women of God who disappointed them. And they struggle with that. There is people, listen, because I know I'm talking. There is people who have a hard time to submitting to authority in their lives. Because maybe what they did was not to disqualify them from ministry, but they just were disappointed. They couldn't believe it. I think many of us in this room have a problem with submitting to authority. I'm going to give you, I'm going to go deep in this here, okay? How many of us, you don't have to lift your hand, how many of us go to the speed limit and don't pass that? Are you crazy, Pastor? Everybody goes five, six, seven, ten thousand miles over. But if we go deep on it, and I'm not trying to bring con condemnation in your life. We try to cheat in the taxes. We try. There is a giant problem in our hearts that I struggle with, which is this. It's not that bad. Everybody else does it. Every Christian does it. But the more you go to the sore of the revelation of God, the Spirit of God, through His Word, which is a sore, the Bible says, that comes and divides the intentions and the things going on in our soul. God wants to give us revelation of things in our lives. So disappointment can be one. Submission to leadership. Hiding sin, 
hiding sin, nobody's going to find that out. The truth is that nobody might find it out, but your relationship with God is being jeopardized in that moment. I read it this morning again, and it hit me like a truck. Anointing, the anointing, the anointing is not negotiable. You know what anointing is? Anointing is what the Holy Spirit does in people's lives while you are doing ministry. That is the anointing of God. Jesus said the Holy Spirit has anointed me to what? To break the chains, to bring light into the darkness, to heal the broken heart. And to, anointing is what only God can do in people's life. And there is a price for anointing. And when you are walking with God and God has plans for you and God has plans for your family and God has plans for your marriage, you need to understand that you need the anointing of God in your life. And the anointing can be jeopardized by things that nobody knows but the enemy is tempting you to do. Did you understand what I'm saying? I heard this, te- this week a testimony. Of the man who used to be the director of P- Pastor Billy Graham, the evangelist Billy Graham. You heard about him, a great man of God. Billy Graham, we do crusades around the world. Thousands of people will go. Thousands of people will go to the altar. And if I don't remember wrong the decade, it was the 70s or the 80s. And they were doing a great crusade in England. And the word of God was preached every night, transforming people's life. And thousands will come to the altar. And the media started going crazy. And the media started writing this. The song that they sing on the end of this preaching is hypnotizing people and working on their emotions. And when everybody's, As as I am, that's the song if you know about it. A song that speaks about just as I am, I come to you, Jesus. It's working in people's emotion, and the media started to write that down. And Pastor Billy Graham told this man who was giving the testimony, the director of Esquire Orchestra, he said, After the sermon today, I'll let you know what the Spirit of God tells me. If we're going to sing the song or no, because media is trying to come in the middle. But Pastor Billy Graham said, but we know who is working. And at the end of the sermon, the anointing of God was there. And Pastor Billy said, today we're not going to sing the song. And he made an invitation. In 15 seconds... You couldn't hear a drop. Silence, and nobody is coming. For 15 seconds to stand here as a pastor, and nobody moves, it's not that easy. And Pastor Billy Graham had his head down, and he's praying. And 15 seconds go by. And then you hear the moving of one chair, and then one and another person, and then the hundreds and the thousands are coming to the altar to accept Jesus. And the next night, they didn't sing the song again. And the next night, they didn't sing the song again. And the next night, and it went on and on. And people is coming just the same than before when they're singing the song. The media, the same media they was writing, the other words before, they started writing, please sing the hymn again. The silence is making us crazy. <laughs> the sore of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit is not just used to perforate the head of the giants in your life, but it also has to be used by God to bring into my life revelation of why do I struggle with the giants that I struggle. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the war, the war became flesh and dwelt among us. This is Jesus. And we beheld his glory, the glory 
as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word is Jesus. The Bible says the war became flesh and dwelt among us. And we, we beheld, this means we saw his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you want to see the glory of God in your life? Oh, yes, Pastor. Do you want to see the glory of God in your marriage? You want to see the glory of God in this church, in your kids, in your family? The Word became flesh. Jesus, through His Word, needs to get into you in a way the only God Almighty can give you the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to the first scripture and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's not a little spirit. It's not talking about demons. It's not talking about the spirit that is in us is big S. I want to finish with this. There is somebody in this room who needs to understand. You need to drop everything you have done till now. And you need to face a giant in your life, in your family, in your marriage, on your knees in front of the Word of God because the sword of the Spirit of God which is in the Word is the only weapon that will bring victory in your life. Would you close your eyes right there where you are this morning? Hebrews 4, 12, if you're right there where you are, and the Holy Spirit is giving you revelation of new giants that you maybe have not discovered yet, or maybe you understand very clearly what is the giant that keeps making you live a life of self-destruction. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 12, for the Word of God is living, is living and powerful and sharper than any sharper than any two-edged sword i told you you need to drop everything else piercing even to the division of soul and spirit this is talking about the human soul and the human spirit The soul, the center of our emotions, our decisions, our priorities. And the spirit that God has given us, who could be dead right now because you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. But if you want to bring life into your spirit, you need to accept Jesus into your life this morning. And the Holy Spirit will come into your spirit and that is the only way that you can start having revelation it, through the word for victory in your life. And I'm going to invite you right there where you are to surrender your life to Jesus. I don't care who you are. I don't care how smart, how rich, how powerful, how famous. Spiritually, I was dead 30 some years ago. And I didn't understand none of this stuff that I'm talking about. But one day I had victory over my pride who would tell me God doesn't exist. I, you don't need this God that they talk about. But I found myself in a place where I said, either I kill myself or I give God a chance. So I went to my room and I said, God, if you're real, 
I need you to reveal yourself to me. And he did. And from that day on, I walk with God. I hear him. I'm not a special. I'm just understood how much I need him. And I want this life that I have for you. I had many years the life that you have lived till now. And I know that that's not life. But if you need Jesus into your heart this morning, I encourage you and I ask you and I beg you to do the biggest decision of your life. Surrender your pride and say, Jesus, repeat after me, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. Holy Spirit, come into my life and make me a new person. Lord, please help me. If you are real, God, reveal yourself to me. I believe that you love me so much that even when I challenge you, you still love me. And you're waiting for people who will seek you. Lord, I ask you that you will just work in people's life. And you will go into people's heart, Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask you of those in this room who are facing a giant and they understood today that they have not cut the head yet. They stay away for a, lot, a while. They have partial victory. But the giant comes back and screams and talks to them. And they go back to do what he says. Lord, I ask you that you would just help us to be a church of people who really understands the power of the Spirit of God Almighty through his word. That we will wake up in the morning and we will know God the more important than doing everything else for this life we cannot have victory without letting your spirit through your word change us Lord, I ask you for those who are struggling with the soul with the spirit with the flesh with the heart with giants in their lives and they are sick and tired of being the ones who are defeated again and defeated again and defeated again. Help us this day to take that sword and say, Devil, I'm done with you. Addiction, hatred, inferiority, pride, rebellious, bitterness, pain, the past, mental health, whatever it is, I'm done with you. I'm going to fill my life so much with the Word of God that I'm going to find total victory. And I'm not going to be the same that I was till today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday, a great week. God bless you.